Welcome to this episode of Sparta County with APM Help. I'm Teresa Conway Hayes. APM Help is a team of experts that work with Property Management Trust Accounting daily. And in the podcast, in this podcast, our experts will reveal strategies for property managers to be able to manage their accounting. First of all, I have a couple of announcements. I want to remind everyone that we will be at the Florida State Conference September 12th through 13th and the PMI Summit Conference September 26th through 28th. And then of course the National NARCOM in Phoenix in October uh, the 14th through the 20th. I'd like to welcome our guests. We have with us here today, Caitlin and Rain. And today we are talking as well as a property management guest, Marianne Morelli. And today we're gonna to talk about a th- Um, what it means to have a three-way reconciliation, and what TTO is. So let's um, go ahead and get started with our questions. We're going to start off with um, Caitlin. Caitlin, can you tell me what you do for APM Help? Sure. I work on the Daily Bank Recs Department, and I also help out with our Triple Tide Out Department. And then Rain, what do you do for APM Help? I am an Appfolio expert on the team and a consultant, and I also work with the Triple Tide Out team as well. So here's the big question. What is a three-way reconciliation? I'll answer that. The three-way reconciliation is three numbers that essentially should match up. So there's lots of different forms out there that you have to fill out. Uh, Most states A lot of states require these forms. Some require you to remit the forms. Others require you to just have them on file. Oftentimes when you have an audit, they'll be looking for these same reports. Essentially, they're looking for the reconciled bank balance, your balance from your general ledger, and also your trust account balance. Okay, so how do you know if you are three-way reconciled? So, it takes some work to get the right numbers. Uh, some people think that the bank reconciliation page where you have three check marks is three are reconciled. That's actually not it. It's a little bit more complex than that. Um, but basically it checks to see if you have enough money in your bank account to cover the liabilities, which could be your tenant um, security deposits, pet deposits are refundable. It could be your owner funds that they haven't been paid out yet, that sort of thing. So you mentioned that, um, actually, I'm not sure. Did you mention the three green check marks? Yeah, so some people think it's the three green check marks. Those are like important and it's like one of the crucial steps to becoming three or reconciled. Without them, it's almost impossible to pull the reports correctly. However, um, they're just really the start of becoming three, three-way tied out. So Rain, do you want to explain why reconciliation is important? Yeah, so the three-way reconciliation or reconciliation in general in Outfolio is important because it makes sure that all of the transactions that you should be recording in Outfolio are in Outfolio and that everything that occurred in real life is also in Outfolio and that your property balances are also correct. So all of your deposits should clear in the month that they're recorded and all of your checks should clear before they're stale. So you really need to make sure that you're keeping up with that. Otherwise, your bank bal- your property balances are no longer reliable and you can no longer guarantee that you're paying your owner out the correct amount. So it really, it does stack up on top of one another if you don't keep up with the reconciliations. So let's talk about triple tied out. How does triple tied out, triple tied out, help with being three-way reconciled. Rain, would you like to embellish on that? Yeah, so Triple Tide Out is our software that we offer through APM Help, and it helps with being Triple Tide Out because it does check, number one, your bank reconciliations daily. So it makes sure that your deposits are cleared, you don't have stale checks, and that you don't have any adjusted cash balance issues, which is looking at your property balances and outfolio, which I mentioned is a big part and component of making sure you're reconciled. Um, and then also, you know, it just makes sure that your liabilities are correct. So that could also flag that maybe you didn't record a tenant deposit receipt, um, things like that. So 
that right there could check to make sure that all of your deposits are recorded and then make sure that your liabilities and your cash match up. And then also, you know, being freeway reconciled, it does that property balance check as well. So it's letting you know like, hey, your property balances aren't looking great over here, but maybe you've missed a deposit in the month. Okay. Caitlin, can a property manager make sure they are three-way reconciled without triple tied out? Yeah, for sure. So they can pull all the reports themselves and many do for the forms that they have to submit. The easiest time to pull them is right after you do a reconciliation. You can use the reconciliation report, go to the very bottom and there's a, a number there for total cash accounts. So you essentially want to be looking for your reconciled bank balance. Then we take that number and that's kind of the number that we're looking to match. If you go to your general ledger report and then you're looking to for the same cash accounts on your general ledger report and then that number for the same dates should also match. Then thirdly, if it's a owner trust account, then you're going to be looking for a trust account balance. So you're essentially the general ledger checks for balances and then the owner trust sorts them by who is owed what. So you're looking for all of these numbers to be overall positive for any owner. Because of course, if an owner's negative, that would be commingling. And then for your security deposit amount, you can check your security deposit funds detail report, which will tell you what you owe for your security deposits. So Caitlin, what items are typically missed in that process? Yeah, so I think a big thing that these forms kind of miss and, and just as miss in general is on clear transactions. So at some point, the deposit's not gonna come in. <laughs> like a year later, I don't think so. Like it, the check is probably at least lost in your office. Um, so that's a huge thing. And even um, checks after a certain amount of time, there's different procedures on how to get rid of them, but essentially they should be taken care of um, like years, but still at, if I see a check for 2012, I don't think that's gonna clear anymore. Right. Uh, Rain, is there anything that you could add about missed items or that sort of thing? Yeah, so they're typically, I mean, the unclear transactions, that's the big major one. That something a lot of people don't realize how much it affects your property balances and the inaccuracy within your system. But also I think that a lot of people don't realize that those small negatives on their properties are big things and a lot of people don't pay attention to them. They pay their bills, they accept the fact that they're drawing a property negative and they're like, oh, rent will cover it. That's kind of not that great. So that's usually missed. A lot of people don't think much into that fact. Also, a lot of people don't think about their prepayments being covered and they usually pay out below what's available for the prepaids. And so that's also a major, uh oh, because it is a liability. It's pretty much like you're paying out of your escrow account to cover a bill. You're paying out of what should be covering the liability. And then also a lot of people don't cover that security deposits go into the operating account. So with online payments, sometimes people pay their rent and deposit at the same time, both go into operating, and then it's never transferred into escrow to cover the liability. Right. So you ladies work with this sort of thing every day. Do you have any tips or tricks? And how about we start with you, Caitlin, for that? Sure, yeah. My favorite trick would probably be when you pull all those reports, merge them all together and put them in your bank account page, the very bottom, because then it's, it's a lot easier than <laughs> storing them in your office. And that way you have a historical record as long as nobody deletes it. Um, and then the other thing is I would say definitely pull those reports as soon as you do your reconciliation. It's a lot easier right from the get-go. Rain, how about you? Yeah, so I totally agree with everything Caitlin just said. So to add on to that, like the reporting, it's also really crucial that when you do run the report to see if it matches, save it to your reconciliation page. You can upload attachments to the reconciliation page. So just keep it in there so that if your adjusted cash balance does go off, let's say you were triple tied out in July, but now you're in August and you have an adjusted cash balance issue, you can reference back to what your property balances were back in July and show that side by side, July 31st, and figure out what happened between the two. 
Um, also, I really like whenever you can run the trust account balance, there's, okay, in general, reports have amazing customization. So a lot of people don't look into that, the ability to add, remove columns, sort by different things. And so my favorite, the trust account balance is very versatile. So it's really cool to add just the operating column, the prepayment column, the bills unpaid column, and then the reserves column. And then that right there should always, those should all cover each other. Your operating balance should cover your prepaid, your unpaid bills, and your reserves. And then also that is what the system is calculating to pay your owners. So it's kind of like a two thing. You can use that report to make sure that your owners are getting paid the right amount and also use the report to check yourself every month. That's some good information. What are some issues that can come up if you don't address the right things right away? Rain? Yeah, so yeah. issues that can come up, I mean, it just, reconciliations are so major because if you don't address them right away or if you're not looking at a report like Triple Tied Out to tell you, hey, some things are awry, accounting issues can pile up and then maybe it's one issue today, but in three days it could be five and then 10 and they just keep accumulating if they're not addressed. Things like negative property balances, liabilities not being covered by the cash, that all just keeps becoming a big ball of a mess. And then eventually you're left with a bunch of things that need cleaning up, which could lead to a very expensive bill, you know, for your team to get everything resolved with experts or whoever it may be. So, and also it ends up with your owners potentially owing money due to overpayment and that never makes owners happy, you know. Um, you could potentially have a negative $1,000 property and that's because you overpaid an owner because a transfer was never made. It's just major things. So it's always good to make sure that you're keeping up with your reconciliations and that your liabilities are covered. So is there anything anybody would like to add, Caitlin or Rain? Yeah, actually, so I mean, three rec forms are so much fun to do by yourself, but uh, we actually are running a promotional for September. So we're gonna waive the $99 setup fee and we're also gonna give you your first month free. So there's no excuses to sign up, just try it and see if you like it. Okay, so for the second half of this podcast, we're going to be talking with Marianne about her experience with TTO. So welcome again, Marianne. Thank you for being so patient and joining us today. Could you tell me a little bit about your yourself and your company? Well, before I went into property management, I worked in IT and application development. I did that until it wasn't fun anymore. So my son had started a property management business a number of years before that focusing on vacation rentals, and that turned out not to be what he really enjoyed. He really enjoyed the property management, a single family and a few multifamily homes. So he needed some help, and in March of 2013, I joined him in the company. Now, prior to that, my husband and I owned some rental properties and had been managing those since about 2001. So this felt like a natural transition. So since March of 2013, we have focused primarily on mid and upper end single family properties in the Charleston and Greenville, South Carolina areas. How long have you been in property management? About 18 years in total. So do you have any advice for property managers that are just starting out? Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> the first is put your infrastructure in place. Have a good management software, a, an accountant that you trust, and a bookkeeping group that you can go to when you have problems. That's an infrastructure suggestion. From a client-based perspective, we found that we need to focus on clients who will take care of their properties, maintain them in the manner that you would expect. Otherwise, you get into what we refer to as a cycle of suck. 
meaning you get a property that's not in great shape. The owner really halfway maintains it. Then you, if you take a property like that, you advertise it, then you get tenants who aren't very happy after they've moved in. So that leads to bad reviews. Then you go to the owner trying to motivate them to do a little better with their property and they get annoyed because you're asking them to spend money and in the cycle just repeats itself. So we, we step back from situations like that and focus again only on those, those clients who will maintain their property in a good manner. Well, thanks for that great advice. Do you have any additional advice for property managers out there who aren't new, but are stuck in a rut and need to increase their door count? Sure. We found customer service is the key. And when I say that, it's important to provide tenants a quality home. It doesn't matter if they're buying a home or if they're renting it. It's their home. It's where they spend their time. And if you take care of your tenants as well as you take care of your owners, those tenants someday eventually become owners of property and may end up needing your services. We have several situations like that right now where we had tenants a number of years ago, they bought a property, lived there for a few years, had to leave the area, and we were the first people they called. Okay. Well, Marianne, I've noticed that your triple tied out badge, badge says that you've been clean for over 600 days. What's your secret to keeping your records clean? Daily review. Triple tied out gives us a snapshot in time, very much like our QuickBooks balance sheet. Mm -hmm. So at a glance, we know whether we have a problem or not. And so once we see an, a warning, then we can immediately look into the problem and resolve it before it becomes something bigger. Do you feel like the triple tied out badge helps your business in any way? Oh, absolutely. Property management does have some negative connotations at times and it opens an area for some creative accounting. I'll just leave it at that. So this gives our owners an additional level of comfort that we have a third party auditing our accounts every day. Mm -hmm. And, you know, in addition to that, it gives us more credibility as a company. Mm -hmm. I get that. So um, what's your favorite thing about Triple Tide Out? I, I think for me, it's that snapshot so that every day I can take a peek at the bottom of my page. And if it's not, if my day's clean is not incrementing, then that's the first place I stop is to see why not. Would you recommend Triple Tide Out to other property managers? Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. That third party audit is, is a huge advantage for any property management company. This has all been really great information. Um, certainly enjoyed the fact that you joined us today. Um, we look forward to having future episodes of this type with other um, experts on our team, other guests like Mary Ann. And um, please be sure to like and comment on our Facebook page if this was something that you enjoyed. And also let us know what you would like to hear in future episodes. Um, where this episode will be published to our YouTube channel. And um, we're always looking forward to providing the property management community with value with this sort of thing, um, replies that we give to folks on our Facebook page and all of that. So again, thank you everyone for joining us and we'll see everybody again next time.